Hi, this is Ian Thompson with v3.co.uk. Now, with me, I've, I've got um, Lyric Semiconductor. Now, we've, as, as we've, been, we've just been discussing this, but as you have said before, there have been processing companies who've come forward and to revolutionise the industry before, but you think you've got something rather special here. Can you just talk us through it? Sure. Uh, well, these are our first chips, which we're announcing at the Flash Summit. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a fixed function probability processor. So uh, what this does is it uh, helps a flash drive be more reliable, last longer, and uh, store more data. Okay, now you mentioned a probability processor. Can you just talk us out through the ins and outs of that? What do got, how does this differ from something you buy from Intel or AMD? Well, the big difference is at the fundamental level, Intel and AMD's chips have logic in them. Logic operates on zeros and ones. Zeros and ones go in, zeros and ones come out. We've got our circuits that take in numbers between zero and one, put out numbers, could be anywhere in between zero and one. So instead of yes and no, zero and one, they're like maybe. Okay, now, it's, <laughs> how does this, I mean, you, when, we, when we were talking about this, you gave the example of it's, it's like a valve that you would either turn full off or turn on, or turn full off or full on, which is what Intel and AMD are trying to do. Um, but how, do, how does that actually work on a level in, in terms of adjusting the flow so that you get the maybes? Well, not everyone realizes that actually transistors don't have to be just on or off. They're actually like dimmer switches. So, um, but no one really uses them that way except for doing what people call analog. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're using them, you know, if it's mostly on, then it's likely to be a yes. If it's mostly off, then it's likely to be a no. If it's in the middle, then it, it's not sure. Okay, now taking that approach to, uh, we've discussed uh, the probability of two people meeting, for example, how does that work in, in terms of streamlining the process and making it more efficient? Sure, so if you have two people, um, say A, Alice, and B, Bob, and you're trying to figure out how likely it is that they'll meet each other and maybe they'll fall in love, um, what you want to do is you want to figure out, well, you know, what's the probability that A, Alice will be in a certain place at a certain time? what's the probability that Bob will be there to meet her and, you know, find your love? And uh, what you might do is you might say, let's take a, a collection of possible ways that this day could go. Let's take a collection of 100 alternative universes or 100 alternative days. Um, then out of those 100 days, how many of those days will A. Alice show up in a certain place? We'll say she's 60, 40 likely to go there. Um, she'll be there 40 of those days. Um, so of those 40 days, how many days will actually actually meet Bob there? It's, you know, say he's 50-50, um, so he'll be there 20 out of her 40 days. So half of them. Half of them. Yeah. So, um, so this is just a toy example, but um, say instead of alternative days, you actually used electrons. And say instead of, you know, sort of mysteriously filtering out um, some of the days at each process, uh, you had a transistor that you were using as a valve and you decided how on or off you were going to have it be mm -hmm. and that's how you let that specific number through. Okay, and then in terms of the processing power required to do this far traditional digital through doing it this way, you're seeing a massive increase in, in efficiency. Absolutely. So if you use the transistors with the dimmer switch to do this calculation, you'll need a handful of transistors. If you were to use transistors as on-off switches instead and try to perform the same calculation, you'd need over 500. In fact, it's more like a thousand. But but if you do sort of pipelining all this, you know, little digital tricks, then maybe you can get it down to five hundred. And that's really sort of the, the basis of our immense area and power advantages. The strange thing about digital is, when you're computing with probabilities, you want to represent one bit, a number between zero and one. You use many bits to do that. You use like eight bits to represent a byte, which tells you the likelihood of something. What we really want is just a single zero and one that goes up and down between zero and one. Okay. Now, the first implementation we're going to see this is, see if this is in flash drives and in error correction on flash drives. Now, we've had certainly some. Uh, there's been a fair amount of industry comment on the reliability or otherwise of flash as a memory storage medium, but because so many of us are now moving over to it as, as if not a key, then it's certainly a growing area of memory. To what level are you able to improve the signal? I mean, my understanding is that currently you're looking at, is it one error in, in 100? Uh, the current the... flash drives, their raw error rate is about one bit wrong in every thousand you read out. Right. Thousand. But the next generation in 20 nanometer flash is one bit wrong. You store many, many bits in there, one bit wrong in every hundred that you read out, as you said. Okay, and then you can cut this 
down to, what, 10,000, 100,000? One bit wrong in every thousand trillion. One with 15 zeros after it. Because you don't want your data to get corrupted. Hmm. And the, the key is, is that probability guessing operation to, that you want to fit inside of your flash drive currently uses practically a Pentium scale chip just to do that processing. So we can boil that down by 30x in terms of the size of the chip and the cost of the silicon, 12x in terms of the power consumption, and also increase the throughput so your flash drive will get you your data faster. Okay, now, and then looking ahead over the next couple of years, how, are you, how is this going to progress? Are we going to see, the journalist to me wants to say, full probability computers. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, is that, the, is that the kind of thing that, we're, that you're aiming for? Is this something which would be running in conjunction with digital systems, coexisting on the motherboard, or would people have to build the equivalent of probability supercomputers to handle specific roles? We won't be replacing digital. Uh, this is a coprocessor or something that lives alongside of digital. But, uh, you know, people are used to special purpose processors. GPUs are great for graphics. You have a coprocessor GPU so you can play video games and do other cool stuff. So this will be a fifth kind of processor uh, family, which will be good for uh, genomics analysis, um, search, um, video games, uh, but all in terms of probability-based operations. Excellent. Well, uh, we shall see how this develops. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.